loves, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be guiding you through all of my witchy books. <laughs> Just to get some disclaimers out of the way with what I mean by that, these are all fictional books, usually fantasy books, which include witchcraft as its main theme. I'm not including books which just feature magic, nor am I including books which have some other synonym for witch, so I'm not including books that are based on magicians or any other word that could be used for witch. These books all include witchcraft and anything that is related to that. And I've also split this into three categories. The first category is a stack of books which feature witchcraft and I've actually read and would recommend. The second category are books which I haven't yet read but I do really want to. And the third category are books which don't necessarily follow witches in the sense of the word but they do have a lot of very similar themes that are taken from witchcraft itself. So this video was actually inspired by a recent read of mine and I just thought I would talk about some witchy books because everybody's in the spooky season mode. I personally really really love witchcraft, I love reading about it and doing a deep dive into things like crystals. I really like the idea of tarot although admittedly I don't know anything about that myself as of yet and I just really like seeing it within fantasy books or any book really. So I just thought I'd talk about it some more today. Now I have been recommending some of these pretty recently because I've done both an autumnal book recommendations and a Halloween reads recommendations videos so some of these are mentioned in there because they do just have the perfect atmosphere but I'm going to start with the book which inspired this video which is Once and Future Witches by Alex E. Harrow. This one I read really recently, it's been in my past couple of vlogs but I ended up absolutely adoring it. So this one combines the suffragette movement with the witch trials so there's three sisters in this. One of them wants to join the suffragettes however she believes that in order for women to gain power back they should also be allowed to practice witchcraft. However when she shows any sign of this they reject her in this, kick her out from the group and so so she decides to start a revolution of her own. Now that does sound like a really basic plot in terms of how big this book is but it is a very almost slow moving revolution in that you see a lot of the behind the scenes and you see a lot of different characters and their part in the movement and it really did end up becoming a story of sisterhood that was just really lovely to read because even though it had its darker moments and all the difficulties that come along with family relationships, the writing itself is really lovely to read. It has beautiful descriptions and imagery that's woven throughout and weaves together the three sisters lives really really well. And we do also have recognisable stories in here such as fairy tales and there is also a lot of rep because we have disability rep, people of colour and LGBTQ plus rep in here too. So I really love this book and yeah, it inspired this entire video. <laughs> Next up is a book which I think is criminally underrated and so I take it upon myself to mention at any given opportunity and that is Witches of Ash and Ruin by E. Latimer. This one is inspired by Irish folklore and follows a girl called Dana who is about to become a fully fledged witch. However, shortly before this is due to happen, members of another coven from outside of their small town enter their town bearing death omens. Shortly after their arrival, they find the body of a dead witch. It doesn't take long for them to start discovering even more bodies of dead witches and they soon realise that there is a serial killer on the loose with a vendetta against witches and so this kind of murder mystery starts. I've come to realise that I really really love books which have Irish folklore influences, it just has the perfect dark creepy atmosphere. This is also a book which again has pretty good rep in terms of there being LGBTQ plus rep and also OCD rep. The story itself is really motivating to read because you do have the mystery element there and you kind of just fall in with the characters because you're quite literally following a coven so you want them all to be okay because they're such a tight-knit group and there's also definitely the small town politics side of things which I personally really love reading about because something about tight-knit communities or almost isolated communities just feels even more foreboding when something goes wrong so I really really love this one and would highly recommend. I am going to leave content warnings or trigger warnings down in the description box underneath each book, at least for any of the books I have read so do be sure to look at them if you are interested. A Witch Who Has Become Very Dear To My Heart is Circe by Madeline Miller. This is a retelling of Greek mythology, Circe is a sorceress banished to an island and set to live alone, however she has a reputation for turning men into pigs whenever lost sailors drift upon her island she lures them in and turns them into pigs or at least that's how the story goes. There is very little about Cersei in any kind of 
ancient Greek text. You do have bits and bobs here and there, but not too much. So Madeline Miller took it upon herself to write her a whole story and I absolutely love it. This is one of my all time favorite books. I wrote my dissertation on this book as well as another one. And she is said to be the very first witch. I think it says even in the first line, when I was born, the name for what I was did not exist. Not everybody loves this book because it is quite slow moving despite being pretty short and you can definitely feel the sense of time passing because she is this immortal goddess of sorts as well as a witch so she sees so many years pass by throughout the duration of this book and you do feel that which I think is why a lot of people complain about this being slow despite it being a pretty short book. But there is just so much to this book that I adore. I feel like Cersei and the descriptions surrounding her or everything that I love. The descriptions of her roaming around this island and making her potions, making her spells, being with the animals is just really lovely to me and obviously there is the darker side as well because she turns men into pigs and everything that came before and after that but it just builds this really well-rounded story and makes Cersei seem like her own character whereas in Greek mythology previously she's kind of just seen as this monstrous figure so I do have a soft spot for Cersei and being one of the earliest witches within literature she has a rightful spot on this list. <laughs> Next up is another one which I have recommended recently and that is Tangleweed and Brine by Deidre Sullivan. This is a very short anthology of fairy tale retellings but the interesting thing about this one and the reason why it remains my favourite fairy tale retelling to this day is that all of these take on a witchy vibe so while we do have the usual stories of say Rapunzel, Hansel and Gretel, that kind of thing, all of them take on the tone as if the female characters or at least one female character is a witch and it quite literally says on the front that it's bewitching which I just feel was such an interesting take and it's not something that I've read about before. Obviously witches do tend to turn up in fairy tales but usually as the villain whereas in this they're very much put towards the forefront of the text and carry that atmosphere throughout so this is another one which I recommend as often as I can and I just find it to be a really interesting rendition of fairy tales and witchcraft alike. I'm really trying not to babble too much about these books because there's so many that this video could go on forever. One which I actually do just want to mention before I forget it because I no longer own this one is Other Words for Smoke by Sarah Maria Griffin. This one is a young adult contemporary fantasy book. It follows a brother and sister who move in with their aunt I believe. I'm a little bit hazy on the details because I read it a while ago now but this is one of those witchy books which just is strange. <laughs> it's a little bit bizarre, it's a little bit quirky. They visit this house every summer I believe or at least a few summers in a row but one summer it burns down and all people find when they arrive is the two siblings sat outside. So this is very much one of those books where you're kind of piecing together a story, seeing how it ended up burning down, flashing back and delving into this mystery to see what happened in the lead up to this event. But like I said it is very quirky. You probably could not predict what is happening in this book before going into it but it makes it a really fun read and there's definitely the witchy vibes there in terms of people learning how to do magic, there's tarot card readings and all that good stuff so just wanted to mention this one before I forgot it since I don't literally have it with me right now. One which is more commonly associated with folklore rather than witchcraft but definitely has witchcraft as a main theme is The Brown the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. This one is based on Russian folklore and it follows a girl called Varsha who can see these spirits. <laughs> as a young child she's told all of these folk tales about spirits and such and as she grows older she realises that they're not all false. She can see the spirits that are lingering around her house and because she lives in quite a religious society she is accused of witchcraft. I feel like this synopsis is always really vague but honestly there's not too much more to say to it than that that wouldn't spoil it. But this is one of my favourite series, I absolutely adore it. It's a polar fantasy, it's so atmospheric and perfect for the winter season. As you continue through the series as well it becomes more of a political fantasy and it just weaves together all of these different storylines and aspects of folklore that makes it really really interesting and it is the folklore side of things which I adore. The house spirits being involved and definitely the witchcraft side of things, how she kind of tries to escape these accusations or people's attitudes toward her regarding that. I just think it's one of the strongest parts of this series. So yes, while it is definitely folkloric. Part of that theme is rooted within witchcraft too so here we have it. <laughs> One which I won't say too much about because I have recommended it recently and it's also just really really tiny is The Crucible 
by Arthur Miller. This one is a classic play which is quite literally inspired by the Salem Witch Trials. So this play centres around the hysteria of the small town as the accusations of witchcraft are flying around and everybody just becoming completely paranoid about that. It's a really intense read when it comes to witchcraft and obviously features directly in the witch trials and the accusations so this is more of a historical approach to witchcraft but it's definitely worth reading if you're interested in that and I really enjoyed it. I really want to watch a production of this because I haven't but I feel like that would be really good. <laughs> and then finally for the stack of books which are ones that I have read, again I'm not going to mention too much about this one because I recommend it constantly especially lately, the Furies by Katie Lowe. This one is a thriller-esque dark academia style book. We follow a group of girls but at the very beginning of this book we know that one of them dies. This book then acts as a flashback so that we get to witness what happens in the lead up to this event, find out how it escalated so far and I say it's dark academia because it does focus in on an appreciation for artwork, we have references to Greek mythology and it is very much up to you to decide whether you do believe it more a fantastical story with witchcraft or if it's just a story of spiralling mentality but it does quite literally on the back say the word witchcraft so I'm including it within this list. <laughs> So on to the books that I haven't yet read, one which I got pretty recently and is actually on my October TBR so hopefully I can read this one soon, is The Year of the Witching by Alexis Henderson. This one just sounds incredible. This one is set in a small town called Bethel and it's said that the first prophet managed to eradicate witches from this land. Our main character Emmanuel one day is led into the woodland, she has this weird draw to it and she finds the ghosts of the dead witches there. They hand her a diary which turns out to be the diary of her dead mother and from then on she discovers lots of secrets that just escalate the story forward. I really don't know anything more than that and honestly I don't want to, I just know that this features witchcraft. I feel like it's going to be a religion versus witchcraft thing and I've heard rave reviews about this. I think it's going to be incredible. Cannot wait to read it. One which is very different to the rest of them but does definitely feature witchcraft is the Girl Who Drank the Moon by Kelly Barnhill. This one is a middle grade set in a small town in which people every single year gift the local witch a baby which is meant to act as a kind of sacrifice to ensure their further protection from the witch. For this story in particular the witch doesn't actually know why they keep giving her babies every year so she actually does take the baby but she rehomes them with someone who will care for them, feeding them starlight along the way. However, this one year she accidentally feeds the baby Moonlight which everybody knows means that the child will now be magic so she ends up adopting this baby for herself and that's all I know. I take it we have a wonderful childhood filled with magical adventures. <laughs> one which is similar to the Furies in that it's not entirely certain whether people are actually witches or not and it's also set within a school academic environment is The Graces by Law Reeve. This isn't the like this is a different cover, this isn't the title, it is called The Graces and in this book we follow a girl who has just moved school where everybody seems to be drawn but also kind of put off by this group of girls called The Graces. As it says on the front everyone said The Graces were witches and there's just this whole aloof atmosphere around them. So of course she ends up being pulled into their group and once she's in there she ends up finding out more than she bargained for. So Really really intrigued to see what this one's like just because it does remind me of the Furies. I'm really hoping it's one of those stories where there's a friend group tentatively start doing weird things and then it just spirals and spirals and escalates dramatically so fingers crossed. <laughs> Another one which just sounds incredible is The Bone Witch by Rin Chepeko. This one, so she comes from a family of witches however her power is different because it's based in necromancy and as with most stories nobody really likes power that's associated with death so I believe she ends up leaving her family and going to find another bone witch who is well versed within this magic. She ends up finding out that she's stronger than she ever knew but there's also a war brewing and so I imagine she gets pulled into that too. This is a series I've been meaning to read for a very 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 long time so I really do need to get on it by now because it's been on my TBR for far too long. And then the final book which is definitely witchy is Medea by Crystal Wolf. This one again is a retelling of Greek mythology and Medea is another one of the earliest witches in literature so she's actually said to be Circe's niece so 
runs in the family. <laughs> and Medea is one of the most notorious villains from Greek mythology because she is just ruthless. She has no qualms in doing things that will also hurt herself if it means that the people she has something against will be hurt even more. She's one of those kind of villains. Like she has no chill and I love it. I love it so much. I did recently read Medea and absolutely adored it. So I'm really interested to see what Crystal Wolf's take on it is. And I just love reading about the witches of Greek mythology because it's really really interesting seeing how ancient literature represents witchcraft. It's just fascinating to me, so can't wait to see what this is like. I also really liked Crystal Wolf's retelling of Cassandra's story, which is literally called Cassandra, so I'm intrigued to see what she does with Medea. So like I said, I do have a third stack, and this one includes books which don't have witchcraft, so to speak, but it will have strong themes relating to witchcraft, whether that be divination, prophecies, crystals, tarot cards, that kind of thing. So again, I'm going to start with the few that I have read, and I'm sure if you've been watching my channel for long enough, you will know exactly what's about to be shown. The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon. This one is set in a world where clairvoyance exists but being clairvoyant is illegal. Our main character Paige Mahoney is a clairvoyant and one day she's caught, taken away to jail apart from things happen and this world is just blown open in ways that you can't even begin to predict. The reason why I wanted to include this book is because even though it's called clairvoyance, within its history it is referred to as witchcraft and as well as that we do also have many 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 things that are related to witchcraft. So we have tarot cards, readings, we have spirits, we have prophecy reading, we have all sorts of things that are just related to it. We have oracles and this entire magic system I guess is based on that. So did just want to mention it because I feel like anybody who loves the witchy vibe would also love this. It's one of the main reasons why I grew attached to the series so wholeheartedly when I was younger and one of the many reasons why I still love it to this day. Another one which I try and recommend at any given opportunity is The Wren Hunt by Mary Watson. This one, like with Witches of Ash and Ruin, is based on Irish folklore and there's many different layers to the story. We do start off with The Wren Hunt which is this Irish folkloric tradition I guess but at the heart of it this is a kind of girl infiltrates enemy lines style situation because in this book there are two different communities of people who are almost like druids who both practice magic but in very different ways which is why they do not get along, they do not agree with how the other community practices magic. So they tend to live their lives apart but one community has an object which could help raise the power of the other one and so our main character in this is sent to infiltrate their community and get this object back. I feel like that was a really convoluted explanation but this book is just so good. I feel like so many people who like YA urban fantasy or even if you're not particularly a fan of urban fantasy because again it has that small community feel. I don't think it'd be too much of an influence on your opinion but I do think so so many people would love this if they just gave it a chance and I always want to hype it up when I can so again in this one we have prophecy reading, we have oracles, we have reading signs within animals or figures that are drawn or the way things land and that kind of thing so yeah. A book which does have the witchy themes kind of in the background but not so much at the forefront is The Raven Boys by Maggie Steve Otter. So this one doesn't follow witchcraft directly, it definitely does have the magical feel to it because this is inherently based within a Welsh mythology. It's also features just lots of whimsical things relating to magic while also being an urban fantasy. But in this one we have our main character Blue Sergeant and her family. She basically lives in this house with her mother and all of her aunts who are all witches basically. This house is chaotic and honestly one of my favourite things to read about because they all do some element of witchcraft in different ways. So there's the people who are very plant based and do things based on nature there are the people who read prophecies, like read crystal balls and stuff. There are tarot card readings, I believe. It's been a very long time since I actually read the series and I do want to reread it at some point, but it definitely is there and the entire synopsis of this and the basis at least of the first book is based on a prophecy. So just thought I would mention that. I know this is a well-loved favourite of the booktube and online bookish community so I'm not going to talk about it for too much longer. <laughs> and finally we have a couple of books which I wouldn't necessarily associate with witchcraft but it does seem to have some element of it based on what I've been saying so far. So the first one is Beneath the Citadel by Destiny Soraya. The blurb of this one quite literally starts with in a city governed by prophecies which immediately caught my attention. Apparently the citizens are ruled by some kind of ancient divination which is what made me want to include it within this video. However this is very much a fantasy story which is based on a revolution but it all seems to 
rely on this ancient divination and prophecy that's been given. And I believe our main character is holding the entire weight of a revolution and this legacy of revolution on her shoulders and trying to get through that with her group of friends before it is too late. So that is that one. And then we also, I don't know <laughs> if this would apply at all, but I did just also want to mention The Diviners by Libba Bray because this one mentions somebody having an obsession with the occult. There's a supernatural power to it and people reading signs. Honestly, I don't know too much about this book. I just know that I want to read the series. I feel like I'm going to really, really love it based on what I have heard. And again, it's based on a murder mystery being tied in with this supernatural power of sorts. So I think this sounds brilliant. Cannot wait to read it. I really hope I love it as much as everybody else does because this is such a fan favorite. I want to know why. <laughs> so those are all the books on my shelves which are inherently based on witchcraft. Obviously, like I said, there are so many more which just include magic, people who can wield magic in some way. There are also books such as Sarah J Mars's Throne of Glass which have witches in it but aren't necessarily the focal point. So there will be many more which include it in some way but for now these are the ones which I just instantly sprung to when I looked at my shelves to find witchy books and so that is a kind of comprehensive list of all of the ones I own, I guess. <laughs> Do let me know what your favourite wishy books are because I love, love finding them. As I said, it is one of my favourite themes in books, so I'm always willing to add to my own collection. But I am going to end this video here, so I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then remember to leave a like and a comment so I know that you're here. If you're not subscribed already, then please consider doing so. Down in the description box you'll find information to all of the books I've just mentioned, all of my social media and other bookish stuff as well. So be sure to check that out if you haven't already. But for now, I hope you're having a lovely day and I shall see you next time with a new video. Bye!